So today I want to talk about my garden plans for 2024 and go over my seed starting schedule. So I'm going to put an overlay up um, showing you what I'm looking at here in my lap so that you can get a good picture of it. But I used a scrapping notebook to sketch out my garden plans for this year. So at the end of last summer, I completely redid my entire garden. I moved it all. I figured out the best most sunny location for the prime center of summer gardening so of course you know as as the season progresses the sun passes farther and farther to the south and so it definitely makes a difference where your shade comes from when you're in a yard like mine where you're just completely surrounded by neighbors who have big very mature trees and it has a massive effect on how much sun that you get. So I finally figured out the best spot and I relocated everything. I expanded and made my garden beds a little bit bigger. And so I'm gonna show you what my plan is now that I have everything down. Um, I do still need to get one garden bed installed, but this is what the plan is going to be. So the farthest to the left, if you're facing my greenhouse, it's the farthest left part of the garden is going to be my tomato beds. And this past year, I did grow my tomatoes in that place, but I grew them in pots. And they did very, very well there. It's the first time that my um, yard has done well for tomatoes. So I am going to put my permanent bed in that place. And then um, I'm going to leave some room in the front. I'm going to have my compost bins there. And then I am gonna go ahead and put two pots there to grow tomatoes in. And those two pots are going to be the heirloom tomatoes, which I do brandy wine. They're my favorite heirloom. And I'm gonna put them in there. That way, when the end of the season comes around, I can relocate them to the greenhouse. And this year, I actually grew them in the greenhouse and it's worked out great for the fall season. I'm still getting tomatoes now. And I, you know, that's great, but in the summertime, they just don't do well because it gets so hot in there. And even with fan going and the doors and the vents open and everything, it still just gets way too hot for them. And tomatoes are touchy. They definitely don't like cold, but they also really don't like hot. They need like that perfect little sweet spot. They do best right around 80 degrees. And so putting them in the greenhouse and growing them in the soil in the greenhouse is just not the best plan if I want to get a good um, crop of tomatoes. So I'm going to put those in pots. That way I can put them in the best place in the garden throughout the summertime to get tomatoes then. And then that way I can relocate them into the greenhouse whenever the season starts to wind down and it's not as hot outside. And that way they can continue producing well into the fall and even into the winter. <clears throat> and so with that, my plan for the greenhouse then is I'm going to put some greens in there um, but I'm also going to grow sweet corn because sweet corn is a crop that actually does very much like the heat and I think of all things It'll be best in there because right around the time that it is time to harvest the sweet corn I will be able to do that and then clear it all out before I need to put the tomatoes in So I think that's going to be a good plan for that And I haven't grown sweet corn in years because it takes up a lot of space But I was trying to figure out what I could put in the greenhouse that would do well in the summertime when it's way too hot for most crops and really corn was the only thing I could come up with. So I feel like I'm not shortchanging myself on not being able to grow anything else because corn is taking up too much space. It's really about the only thing I can put in there. So I'm going to do that. And then in these blocks around the tomato bed, um, I'm doing a double block, like two blocks high bed because it needs to be deep enough for tomatoes, right? And so <clears throat> I will be putting carrots in those because that way they have plenty of room to grow and get long and go deep. And they just, the one block is too shallow. That's what, that's the way I've been growing them and they do okay, but they definitely, they hit the bottom and they can't go any farther because I do have landscape fabric down to control weeds. So they can't go through that fabric. They hit it and they stop. Um, <clears throat> but I'm also going to put in um, different herbs and plants that will help with pest control. And so all across the back of the tomato plants, I'm going to put marigolds 
and then I'm going to also do basil and rosemary around that as well and then actually in the planting bed with the tomatoes onion is a good companion crop so I'm going to do my yellow onions in there and then I'm going to grow some nasturtium and I will put a picture up here of what nasturtium looks like in case anyone hasn't seen this before because I hadn't heard of it until last year whenever I started doing it as a companion plant and it's also edible you can eat the flowers you can add the leaves to your salads with greens it's kind of a I haven't actually tasted it yet um, but from what I hear it's kind of a peppery flavor similar to arugula or something where it's a little bit spicy um, so that is the plan for the tomato bed and then next up is going to be kind of a dual purpose bed actually all of them will serve sort of as a dual purpose um, I am debating doing cabbage <clears throat> I haven't grown cabbage in a long time I've done broccoli and Brussels sprouts in the past <clears throat> excuse me but they are very big plants they take up a lot of space so it's something I've kind of shied away from however since they are an early season crop I should be able to harvest them before it's time to put the green beans out because you really don't sow green beans until early June at least where I'm at I'm in zone 6b and so I will probably do I don't know which kind of cabbage yet. I don't know if I'm going to do Brussels sprouts or traditional cabbage or maybe try red cabbage because I use a lot of red cabbage, but I'm probably going to do that first. And then whenever it's done, I will then put green beans in its place. And also in that bed, I'm going to do a zucchini. I'm going to do some nasturtium because I get squash beetles very easily. And until I lived in this house, I never had an issue with squash beetles ever, um, but they are a very big nuisance and um, nasturtium is one of those companion plants that you can put in very close to your squash variety plant so whether it's like zucchini summer squash um, cucumbers grow in the same way and cucumber beetles can be a problem with those and uh, pumpkins or watermelon anything like that that grows in a vine and you plant in a hill um, squash style seeds that they all look the same any of those plants um, cucumber beetles and squash beetles can be a problem but nasturtium will help alleviate that so I will be putting nasturtium around the zucchini plants and then also in the blocks it's going to be the same kinds of herbs basil rosemary and marigold are very good with pest control and I also use them a lot so I will be planting those along with beets in between and then finally, the uh, bed that's farthest to the right <clears throat> is going to be bell peppers and uh, more squash plants. So zucchini and summer squash will go into that. And then I will have my red onions because I use a lot of red onions. So that will be in the blocks around with the same herbs. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is grow arches, or well, I shouldn't say grow, I have arches that I'm going to put up between the middle and the right beds that they are right over the path that walks up to my greenhouse and up those arches is where I'm going to grow my vining thing. So I will have cucumbers across um, the biggest portion of it and then um, towards the end I am going to grow butternut squash and then I will put like a couple of plants on each side and grow them over so it'll be pretty thick and pretty thick and viney but there will be room for them to grow when they aren't spreading out over the ground taking over everything um, it's just a huge space saver to do arches and trellises um, and then also it's going to help with ease of picking because I can just walk under and when they grow they will hang down and then I can just grab them and I don't have to like pull leaves back and root through and especially with cucumbers those leaves can be very prickly and it's not pleasant to dig through them so um, I am planning to do that for my vining plants for the year so that is the garden layout and then my seed starting schedule so last year was my first year growing these plants or starting them from seed instead of buying them all from the nursery and honestly it was an expensive year and it's because I had to buy all of my seed starting stuff I had to get my plant stands I had to get my grow lights I had to get my pots my seed starting mix and a lot of seeds um, but this year so I still have some seed starting mix I have all of my grow lights plant stands pots all of that stuff now um, and even most of the seeds um, you know seeds from last year you can still grow the germination rate is not going to be as high so I'll have to add an extra few seeds um, but they should still germinate without me having to go buy a bunch of new seeds now after this year I'll probably um, get rid of them and buy more for next year I don't want to push it too far um, but for my starting schedule I kind of I took 
lots and lots of notes last year so that I could keep track of what was growing best and when and when I started it and then if it did well, if it didn't do well, if it was too early or too late. So using that information, I have come up with a schedule for this year. And so I'm going to start with onions in January. And so I did start some red and yellow onions from seed last year, but they didn't really do very well. They were barely even up, and when I transplanted them, they all died. So I think I'm going to revert back to buying onion sets this year to do those because I've always had success with that in the past. So I think that's the best uh, course of action. But green onions, I they have done really well, and actually I still have them growing. I'm not certain if I will need to even plant anymore because I had them in just a little container and they're doing well and it seems like the the more that their root system grows the more kind of entangled they become and as I was pulling them up a lot of times they would break off instead of pulling all the way out and the spots where they broke off it started shooting up new greens so kind of to be determined on whether I'm actually going to start another set of green onions. I probably will just because they go in a pot and they grow in the greenhouse and so they're just really effortless. Um, so those will be January 15th. Onions are the earliest thing that really need to be started because they take the longest to germinate and grow up to maturity. And then after that, on February 1st, I'm going to start bell peppers, tomatoes, marigolds, possibly marigolds. I have direct sown marigolds outside and they do germinate and they do well. However, it takes them a lot longer to reach maturity and since I want them for pest control, I think I would rather um, go ahead and start them indoors and that way I have a plant ready to go when it's time to put all of the plants in the garden. Um, and then the cabbage. So those, because the cabbage especially gets planted out earlier, I wanna get that started somewhat early. Um, and then middle of February, it will be jalapenos and the nasturtium and then the different herbs like basil and really probably just basil and rosemary and maybe some thyme because I don't have any thyme right now. But my oregano patch is thriving. I mean, it's definitely, it's, oregano is kind of similar, I feel like, to mint where it is a perennial and it comes back bigger and bushier every year and it will take stuff over if you don't keep it pruned back. Um, but anyway, so I will get those herbs started as well. And then um, the nasturtium, a point I wanted to make on that, and I did do borage last year too, but I didn't find that one to be as beneficial. It didn't do as well once it was planted as the nasturtium, um, but I do really, the nasturtium gets big and bushy and kind of takes things over a little bit, which is great for pest control. You want something that is um, going to crowd out any type of opportunity for pests to get in but it is one of those that does not like to be transplanted. So you can't put that in a traditional um, seed starting little pot and then transplant it up as it gets bigger and then transplant it to the garden. So what I do for those is I save toilet paper rolls and I put them in like a little um, like lid of my seed starting kits once all of the stuff is out of them. And I fill them with dirt and I put the nasturtium seeds in that. And then when it comes time to put them in the garden, I just take that entire toilet paper tube and I transplant that directly into the garden so that the roots do not get disturbed. And I did that last year and it worked perfectly. And then of course the toilet paper roll breaks down and composts in the soil. Um, so then as of March 1st, it's going to be time to start direct sowing the lettuces into the garden. Um, one thing that I do need to work on along with the garden bed because this is also going to be about the time that I need to get that garden bed done and everything finished and ready to be planted, which kind of makes me regret not doing it last, in like August when I was doing everything else, not just finishing it then, but I was so burned out on it that I decided to put it off. So now I'll be doing it while it's cold outside, which kind of stinks, but that's okay. Um, I also need to build... A, um, like a cold frame, which is essentially what I have out there now, but it's plasticky and the little plastic covers, you know, they last a season and then they start to dry out and then they get holes in them and then I have to get rid of them. And so I am going to build just a little frame and then I have these antique windows that I picked up for $15 a piece. I have two of them. And so I'm going to put those over top and then I will put um, like the same kind of polycarbonate stuff that's on the greenhouse will go around the outside and then that um, uh, window will go on top. And then that way I'll just have like two handles on it. I can just lift it up and off and access all of my greens. And so I will have 
two of those possibly. And so this is where I haven't quite made my decision yet if I wanna do cabbages in one of those beds and then remove those later, or if I want to do two cold frames and do lettuces in each bed because greens is something I eat daily and they are super important. And also along with the lettuces, radishes, beets, and carrots will need to go out at that time. All of the early spring vegetables. And I just realized I don't have peas down on here, but I'm certain that I added them. Ah, uh, yes, it does look like I'm planning to do peas where the cucumbers are going to go. So the peas will go there first because they are an early spring vegetable as well. And then they will be done about the time that I'm ready to plant the cucumbers. So those will also be going out at the 1st of March. And that is really it. Everything else, it's just a matter of letting it reach maturity. So everything will actually get planted into the garden between about the middle of April and the 1st of May, just depending on when that last frost date comes along and how warm it's going to be. Um, so I will definitely be sharing once I start um, doing the seed starting. So the whole process throughout the spring and as I get into the growing season, I will be sharing on here. But that is the plan so far. There are still a couple of things that are kind of pending, um, but I think I have a pretty solid plan overall. And I'm just hoping that everything works out the way that I intend for it to. But oftentimes that doesn't happen. So there will probably be um, just a little bit of impulsive spur of the moment changes that come up. But if you want to follow along and see how it goes, please come with me. Before I let you go, I thought I would actually show you a real quick shot of what this garden looks like. And so these are, this is the bed that currently has the greens in it. And it will continue to have greens and the squash and bell peppers here. This is the one that will have zucchini and then green beans and possibly cabbage before the green beans. And then here is where <coughs> the archway will be, where the peas and then cucumbers and um, butternut squash will grow up it. And then this is the part that I still need to complete. Um, this is where the tomatoes will go and I will have to do um, more concrete blocks uh, too high, a little bit shorter and wider than these are so that my tomato cage cover, which is right there, will fit over it. Oh goodness, a squirrel just like fell out of a tree right there. That was crazy. Oh goodness. Um, and then here is where my little compost bin is. I'm gonna add a second one, but then all of this will be rocked around it. So that is my garden. And clearly the chicken wire is off of that end because Miss Emily has made her way inside, which is okay because nothing is growing in it currently, but. Hi, you little pest. What you doing in there? <laughs> Silly critter. Oh, <laughs> there she Oh, you're such a little turd.